Hi, I'm James. Hey, I'm James. Hey, I'm James Heaney, and uh, this is the real life of James Heaney, the vlog series, just giving you general updates on what's going on. Uh, this here is a park that I typically will bring Punkert to. I don't usually go here by myself. Uh, I take Punkert here in that area over there. You could see there's some picnic tables. There's even open pits for barbecues. I've never done that. That would be a great time. Come by, have a barbecue. Uh, maybe we can enjoy the barbecue together. I don't know. But uh, if there's sports going on on this field, like if they're playing baseball or football or soccer, I can't be here with my dog because Punker is not well enough behaved to stay here. So here's what's going on. I've been working on my stand-up. I mentioned that I was going to uh, do that this year, and I am following through with it. I've done two 10-minute sets this month already. Um, and I'm trying to do more. I've got both of those recordings, but I don't want to put those recordings up because I don't want it to, because I'm going to redo the stand-up. It's not what I usually do. Typically, what I used to do is do a set and then maybe repeat it one time ever, and that's it. So if you go on my YouTube channel, you can see stand-up from 2012 and before that uh, I, I maybe repeat one or two bits uh, out of all my stand-up. And I think I did pretty good. The problem is, is that's not the way that you do stand-up. If you want to do stand-up, you've got to have a recurring 10 tight minutes. T a tight 10? I think that's what they call it. That's the lingo, a tight 10. So here's what I'm thinking. I'm trying to figure out how can I share this for anybody that's interested in seeing the process instead of seeing the completed thing without repeatedly putting the same material online. Like the gypsy story. I have that. If you're familiar, maybe you've heard that stand-up bit. It is a stand-up bit that I have done on stage, uh, I think twice. And I've also told the story in real life, just like if you've got a, and we all love them, a grandparent that has a story that they tell over and over. That gypsy story is my grandpa. To, I'm going to tell my kids that story and my kids' kids that story. So I'm thinking about putting it up unlisted and maybe putting links to it in, in, um, in, in videos just like this. And that way it's not flooding my feed. People aren't seeing it. I, do, I don't necessarily want it to be public, but this doesn't feel public. This feels private. Uh, so two, I did two different sets. One of them, Jack Sulu. Actually, Jack Sulu connected me to both of these sets. One of them was in Hollywood at a place called We Make Movies. And it was a pretty decent crowd. It was pouring rain outside. And there was probably about 30 people in the audience. And the cool thing about this is after you do your set, afterwards, the audience will give you notes on things, which is unheard of. I've never seen anything like it. It was really useful, especially as I'm working this new set. Then the second time I did the show, it was in a dive bar. And it was like, um, I don't know how to really explain it. It was like a bar with like a really small bar. At one end of it was where the microphone was with some speakers behind. You'd almost expect to see karaoke. And then there's like two tables here, a bar, and it's just like a long, it doesn't feel like a room or a bar. It feels like a hallway down to the doom spot, which is where the microphone's at. I think I did a good job um, both times, and I'm willing to put an unlisted video. Not today. I'm busy. I got a bear supply show tonight. But I'm willing to put an unlisted link to it if anybody wanted to check it out. But I would say um, I want to do it two more times before I actually have a recorded version I want to keep. Because once I put a recorded version up, I'm not going to put a second recording of the same material up. Uh-uh. Not going to happen. So wait for that. Um, and post in the comments if it's something that you'd be interested in seeing. Because it's in the rough stages right now. It's not, you know, some Jim Gaffigan up there on a Netflix special. At this point, it's James Heaney uh, patchworking together a comedy set. Uh, secondly, I just got back from Sketchfest over the weekend. I was in Sketchfest. Uh, I drove up there Saturday, and we came home on Monday, which was Martin Luther King Day. But technically, we came home Sunday night. I had a show Saturday, had a show Sunday night. Uh, let's see. I'm, I'm debating whether or not it's worth telling the story. This is going to be a long video. I don't know. Maybe you guys want to hear a long video. So on the during the week, I'm working and doing all my auditioning and things. So Saturday morning, we need to leave really... Oh, you're going to love this story. It just occurred to me. It's got a cameo appearance by somebody you love. Uh, so Saturday morning, we wake up pretty bright and early, and we leave our house uh, by like 9... 9 o'clock in the mornings to drive to San Francisco because that's where Sketchfest is at. Whose house are we staying at? 
Mitch's house. So we're on our way up, but because I guess, I don't know, there's probably a lot of different reasons, uh, but I think there was mudslides that covered one of the directions that we would usually go. So a lot of traffic is being siphoned, siphoned, funneled, the opposite of siphoning, funneled into smaller corridors heading up north. So traffic was not good. And I was looking at it, I was like, well, I, if we go to Mitch's house, Mitch lives in, I don't know if I should share, Concord. And, um, that's like about, depending on the time of day, an hour, hour and a half from San Francisco, or at the right time of day, like 30 minutes in the middle of the night. So we were on our way, and I had to let him know, you know, we're just going to come after the show, which was kind of the first plan, um, because I had a show with a call time of, like, I think it was like 8.15 or something, and then we were going to be going out and going to the fancy parties, you know, Sketchfest has some famous people there, and you get to bump elbows with them, and it's fun. Uh, and it's not just the famous people, it's the talented people. That's the famous people, too. And uh, so we did the show, and afterwards we went to this place called the Speakeasy in San Francisco. We get a token for a free drink, which, since I was driving, that was the only drink I was going to have. And even then, I usually won't, but it was so fancy, I had to get a drink in my hand. Um... It's like there's secret rooms in this basement. As you walk in, there's I saw one wardrobe that has like a mirror, uh, but you open it up, and inside of the wardrobe is a small little room where people are hanging out. I didn't go inside of it, but it looked like there was some sort of a show going on. Whether it was stand-up, it could have been a magic trick. If you guys have ever heard of um, the Magic Castle in L.A., that's very similar. You'll see little tiny rooms with performers doing magic tricks in it. And... I didn't go inside of it because it, we didn't have a lot of time. Um, but I got to hang out with people. Drove to Mitch's house, and he's such a nice guy. It, we arrived at his house at 2 a.m., which is when I said I'd get there. I thought we were going to be earlier. I'm glad I told him it was going to be 2 because when we rolled up at 2, at least he expected it. But parking by his place is tough, so I had to park about two blocks away, and we had blankets and pillows and stuff with us. He drove and picked me up at 2 a.m. His wife, Claudia was awake and like welcomed us what nice nice people um so he made me feel at home i got to see his coveted shelf of all of his cool toys and then the next morning we had breakfast at denny's uh and i enjoyed it it was a lot of fun and then i went back but it turned out i didn't go back to his house the next night because um it's just it's a long drive and i knew that if i left on Sunday, I went, Sunday I saw some cool different things in San Francisco, but after the show, it was pouring rain again, just pouring, and we finished our show at about 8.15 or 8.30, something like that, and there's a show called Thunderbolts, which is a male stripper short form comedy show, amazing show, but that didn't go until 10, and it's like, well, if we wait for an hour and a half, and then we have to, um, then we would probably at least hang out if the show's over. I'm not going to drink, because I've got to drive to Mitch's house, which is a long distance. It ended up, we decided after our show, we'd drive back. So I drove back from San Francisco Sunday night, arriving Monday morning at like 3.30 in the morning. And I had all of Martin Luther King Day to rest. It turned out I had all of Tuesday to rest, too. I haven't had any auditions this week. But I'm on a veil for a commercial, and I might fly. I don't even know. It shoots. Uh, I'm on 27th, 28th, 29th, and then also on February 1st, 2nd, 3rd, and 4th. That's an unheard of amount of days for a commercial to have you on hold for. And the fitting was supposed to be today or tomorrow. I still don't even know the fitting time. It looks like it might be falling through the cracks. and I could really use a win here, though, guys. Um, well, this is a much longer video than I expected it to be. So thanks for watching. Um, and if you're interested and you didn't know, check out Brief News Brief. It's on the original Understudies TV channel. It's, original, it's OU Television on YouTube. Check it out. This is the real life of...